Filmed in Cache, Oklahoma in 1907, this is the first Western movie ever filmed anywhere in the world that had any sort of plot. The title page there says 1908, but the actual filming is believed to have been done in 1907. That man riding in there is Al Jennings, a reformed outlaw who plays the role of the head bank robber. He comes in and he says, hey fellers, there's a bank over at Cash. I think we could rob it. We could be rich. We'll never have to work again. The other guys seem to agree, so they go off to saddle their horses. They're thinking about all the money they're going to make. Bank in cash, a normal business day. It's business as usual. Al Jennings is going to come riding up on his horse, and there he is. He's going to tie him to that hitching rail out there. He's going to come into the bank and kind of look around, see if they've got a security guard, see how thick the safe door looks, see if it's going to be easy to rob couple of marshals coming out the door. They kind of notice him, but then they go on about their business. Remember, we've got real federal marshals playing these lawmen. That lady there is Nita Birdsong. She's the daughter of Quanah Parker. On a personal note, my mother took piano lessons from Nita Birdsong in the famous Quanah Parker Star House. Now Al Jennings is going to go out there and get back on his horse, and then he's going to go and get the rest of the bad men. citizens of cash have shown up for the bank robbery. Okay, the bad guys are riding back into town. They're going to rob this bank. This is just part of them here. The other guys might be coming in from another direction. Then we've got a stagecoach coming in. This stagecoach just happened to belong to Quanah Parker, the great Comanche Indian leader. And Quanah Parker actually comes out of the stagecoach and walks into the bank. Uh-oh, here comes the bad guys. We've got a bank robbery on our hands. Thank <laughs> you. 
bad guys pull their guns, push the marshals out of the way, and force their way inside the bank. When the excitement starts, three guys jump out the window of the bank, and now there's a lot of shooting going on. Bang, bang, bang. Uh-oh, we've got some guys hurt. And the rest of the robbers are getting away. Well, they're going to stop and pick up one of their hurt guys. They throw him across the saddle and off they go. This is the first shoot em up bang bang ever recorded on film. townspeople are saying, hey, we need to form a posse. We need to go catch those guys. So they're passing out guns and they're going to go after those guys. Four or five real federal marshals and Kiwana Parker, the great Comanche Indian leader. Hurry guys, they're going to get away. You see that church steeple in the background? That's the Christian church in Cache, Oklahoma. It was there in 1907, and it's still there in 2007. This is looking north toward the beautiful Wichita Mountains. You can also see the lumber yard building on this side of the church. Okay, there goes the bad guys. One of them gets shot and falls to the ground. And the rest of the bad guys just tear off for the mountains. Well, where's the posse? Well, this is a little house in the mountains. This lady seems to be looking for somebody. Well, it's Al Jennings and his gang. Look, Al seems to be affectionate with her. This must be Al Jennings' girlfriend. He says, Honey, we've got a hurt man here. We just robbed the bank in cash and one of our guys got shot. Can you help him? So she comes out of the cabin with a bucket of water. She gets a dip, dip full of water and, and she's going to try to give it to this hurt man. And then all the other robbers, they get a drink out of the water bucket. And Al says, honey, we're going to have to leave this man here with you to take care of, and we've, we've got to go on. But she says, oh no, he stopped moving. I think he's dead. You can't leave him here. I don't want a dead man here. You've got to take him with you. So they pick up the dead man, they throw him across the front of the saddle again, and off they go. And the girl's worried, she's worried that they've committed a murder. So Al kisses her goodbye and don't know when he'll see her again. So he goes off to follow his gang. Girlfriend's just, she just sits down to cry. She's really worried about the trouble they're in. But she looks off in the distance. She thinks she sees the posse coming. So she's got her horse handy, so she's just going to mount her horse and go warn her sweetheart Al and the rest of the gang that they better be on the move that the posse's are coming. Well, 
look around the other side of the house. Here comes the posse. They're hot on the trail of those bad guys. Well, let's check at this cabin, see if anybody knows anything here. Well, here comes some guys out of the cabin that I've seen before. I don't, I haven't seen before. I don't know how they fit into the scheme of things. Well, here we are at a creek crossing. Oh yeah, here comes the bad guys. Fleeing justice. Well, they're going to take that dead guy and just dump him off in the creek. They don't have time to give him a very ceremonious burial. And the guy riding in the back, he's got the loot and a sack thrown across his shoulder. That bad guy, he just sinks to the bottom. Well, here comes the girl. She's hot after him to tell him they better be moving the posse's on their trail. So she just splashes on through the creek she don't even see the dead guy they've dumped off and here comes the posse they're not far behind about that time the dead guy comes floating up to the surface of the creek water so they're surely going to see him Well, they see the dead guy. So they're just going to pull him up out of the, fish him out of the water and take him up on the bank. Right here, you can see Bill Tillman using American Indian Sign Language to Quanta Parker. He's telling Quanta what their plan is. So they take the dead guy up out of the creek and lay him on the ground. Well, they're going to go through his pockets, see if they can tell who he is or where he's from or who his friends are. They're finding a little bit of information, but they don't have time to give him a ceremonious burial. They'll have to come back later. Get moving, fellas. The bad guys are still on the move. Okay, there they go. Along with a hound we hadn't seen before. Well, now this scene here, for me, does not seem to fit with the bank robbery movie. I think this scene was shot when the other movie, The Wolf Hunt, was shot, because this building also appears in The Wolf Hunt movie, but it does not appear anywhere else in the bank robbery movie. I'll tell you another thing that's strange about this scene, is that Al Jennings, the bank robber, appears in the same scene and shaking hands with the marshals. So they're like, hail fellows well met. Why are they greeting each other like this? But anyway, this is the way we received the movie and we're leaving it as we received it. But uh, we're just explaining that we think this scene might have been accidentally included. Also, here's a wagon with a chuck box that doesn't appear anywhere else in the bank robbery movie. And these guys start just casually throwing provisions into it, camping equipment, suitcases, looking like they're going off on a hunting trip.
Come on, fellas, get this scene out of the way so we can get back to the bank robbery movie. Okay, they wave their hats and off they go, leaving us to wonder why this scene was ever included. And they've also got a pack of dogs that don't show up anywhere else in this movie. Another little mystery appears here. The camera is going to pan to the left, and you will see a man on a horse. Looks like he's hiding in the trees. And I have no idea why the man is there. There he is, the man in the trees. All right, we're back at the bad man's hideout. Now well, they feel like they've outrun the law. They feel like they're going to be safe here. Unsaddle their horses. Prepare to set up camp. One guy's gonna take the horses off and tie them out to graze. Al Jennings takes the bag of loot. He's gonna start counting it out to see how big a haul they made. The man behind him is breaking up sticks to build a campfire. And the other guy's just casually washing up. Not a care in the world. Well, the guy has put the horses out to graze. Hey, if you look back in the distance, you'll see the girlfriend coming. She's been trying to catch him all this time. She's going to tell him the posses are coming. And Al Jennings, always the gentleman, doffs his hat to his girlfriend. And she says, Sweetheart, you have to get going. The posse is coming. You don't have any time to spare. I've been trying to catch you. And look, back in the distance, there's the good guys. Here they come. The bad guys hadn't even seen them yet, but they know they have to get moving. That gal's still whipping her horse. So the good guys kind of making their plan back there, and uh, it seems like they would just try to chase them down, but uh, no, they think they know a better way. They know where those horses are tied, and they're going to go set up an ambush. All right, here's the horses out grazing. Here comes the good guys sneaking up. They're going to set an ambush. They're going to get those guys when they come to get their horses. Hide down behind those rocks. And here comes Al Jennings and his gang. They don't seem in very big hurry. They're just kind of enjoying, enjoying the scenery of the beautiful Wichita Mountains. All of a sudden, the marshals jump up and open gunfire. The crooks shoot back, but of course, none of the good guys get hurt. And almost all the bad guys take at least one bullet. Bang, bang.
You might wonder how this ever, how this movie ever came to be made in Oklahoma uh, at such an early date. Uh, Thomas Edison, who developed the movie making process, thought he should have sole rights to using movie making. So he got an injunction to stop other movie making back in Pennsylvania. But the injunction was not uh, any good out in uh, Oklahoma Territory. So that's one reason that they came to Oklahoma to make the movie. Another reason was that uh, Teddy Roosevelt had seen the had seen uh, Jack Abernathy capture wolves and coyotes with his bare hands, and he wanted them to get that on film. And so um, the same bunch of movie makers uh, just made both films out in uh, Southwest Oklahoma in 1907. But anyway, they get these guys patched up, sorted out. Come on, fellas, let's get them back to town. We need to get the money back to the bank and get these fellas in jail. is going to go to jail with uh, with all the rest of them. I'm not sure exactly how she got in the scene. She was not with the bad guys when they walked out to get the horses and she certainly wasn't with the marshals but anyway <laughs> they've caught her somehow and she's going to go to jail with the rest of them. kind of bound up their wounds and tied up their hands. Off they go to jail. There's Quanta Parker right there. Here they are coming out of the Wichita National Forest Game Preserve. It's now called the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. It's still there, still maintained by the federal government. They've got herds of buffalo, longhorn, deer, elk, all kinds of fish and fowl. Quanta Parker is kind of riding in the lead right there on his, he's the one on the light colored horse. Off they go to cash. at the bank of cash. Well, they're bringing the robbers back in. They're going to put the money back in the bank and hopefully take those guys off to jail. There's one hurt guy or dead guy laying on the seat of a wagon that we haven't seen before. And all the townspeople are going to be excited and these guys are going to be heroes. This bank building burned down not too long after the film was made, so there have been more banks in cash since then, but this one's no longer there. Yeah. 
everybody's coming to see the robbers. Probably the biggest event that happened in Cash's young history. guy getting carried off and Quanta Parker comes riding out of the group riding in the lead is Quanta Parker you can see him more clearly this time and if you look closely you will see that he still wears his hair in braids as was the Comanche custom it's one concession he would never make to the white man's style. He always wore his hair in braids. He was a warrior chief among the Quahada Band of Comanche until finally, in 1869, he led his starving band into Fort Sill to turn himself in. He then became a leader among his people and spoke for other tribes and bands of Indians as well, encouraging the Jesus Road, education, and work as the white man saw it. He had many friends among presidents and among American ranchers. He had one foot in the Native American world and one foot in mainstream America and was apparently proud of both. Well, off they go to jail, girlfriend and all. townspeople milling about talking about the great bank robbery in Cash, Oklahoma. Quanta Parker again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the bank robbery in Cash, Oklahoma.